so good. It's the world's best chocolate icing. You've got to try this recipe. I promise you will not be disappointed. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is part two in a four part series of Caking 101. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to make icing. And this particular recipe that we're gonna use is my world's best chocolate icing. And a little bit of a story behind how I created this recipe. I was laying in bed one night and I couldn't sleep. I do a lot of my best thinking when I'm laying in bed late at night because I have six kids and during the day, oh, our cakes are done with all the noise that's going on. And so I'm laying in bed at like one in the morning and I could not sleep because I had to try this out. So I got up and went into my kitchen and made this and it was amazing. And so I made a blog post about it and it's super yummy. So I wanna show you how to make that today. I'm posting a link below to the recipe for this icing um, that you can find on my blog. But for today's purpose, I'm just cutting the recipe in half because I don't need as much um, the recipe on my blog. It makes a pretty large batch. I think it's like 10 or 12 cups. Um, so it makes a lot and today I'm just making a small cake so it's easily able to be cut in half. So there are two parts to making this icing. The first one is making the ganache and that is pretty simple and straightforward. You just want to take the chocolate chips. You can use semi-sweet or dark chocolate, whatever you like, and take your cream and pour it into the bowl with the chocolate chips. Now we're gonna just give that a quick little stir. And I use the microwave for melting this, but you can use a double boiler over the stove if you'd like. I just find it's a lot quicker and easier in the microwave and you can have a little more control over it if you're a busy mom with six kids, like me, or if you don't have six kids and you just want to use the microwave. So I had my chocolate and cream in the microwave for about two minutes and then we've taken it out and you can see that the cream started to get extra hot and it's not fully incorporated at this point. So we're gonna give it a stir. Now the cream seems like it is hot enough that it could melt the rest of these chocolate chips if we just let it sit here for a few minutes. So that's what I'm gonna do. So you wanna just keep stirring this until the cream is fully incorporated into the melted chocolate and there are no more chunks of chocolate. So this is pretty close to being done. Um, I just wanted to show you the final stages of that fully incorporating into each other. So you can see here there's some cream still and we just wanna scrape the bowl until that cream is fully incorporated. And then you should have a silky smooth ganache. Now at this point, if you were just going to use ganache, you could pour it on your cake or let it set up until it's more of the consistency of peanut butter. And then you could ice your cake with that and it would be delicious. But I love adding it to this recipe because it just takes it over the top and it's so good. Now that it's fully incorporated, we are going to set it aside so that it cools down um, to room temperature while we make the other part of our icing. So this is the buttercream portion of the recipe and we're going to start by adding our room temperature butter and cream cheese. The cream cheese just adds some tanginess and takes away that overly sweet flavor that can sometimes be associated with an American buttercream, so it just balances the flavors out really well. We're going to add that to the mixer. We're going to cream it. And halfway through you want to scrape down the sides so that it will fully mix together. At this point we're going to add our vanilla extract, more coffee, and again you can make this as strong or as weak as you'd like, but the coffee flavor really does bring out the richness of the chocolate and enhances the flavor so much, so I definitely recommend adding this. Mix those together. Okay, 
Now we're gonna add our cocoa powder, and I use dark cocoa powder because it just creates a really intense chocolate flavor that I love. If you're going for a black icing, this also just allows you to not have to use as much um, food coloring in your final mix. So this is really good for black icings as well. And now we're gonna add the powdered sugar and we're gonna mix that together. So at this point, your buttercream is gonna seem a little dry, more dry than normal buttercream, and that's okay because later we're gonna put the ganache into the buttercream and it will make the consistency more appropriate for icing a cake. So it's a very thick buttercream right now, um, and then where it's kind of like fudge. I wanna lick it so bad, but I'm diabetic and I can't. Here, I'll lick it. I forgot what I was doing my diet. Oh yeah, bummer. But that's really good icing. All right, once your ganache is room temperature, we're gonna add it into the buttercream mixture. And now we're going to just mix that together and whip it for a few minutes. Now I would whip this for about three to five minutes and it just makes it really light and fluffy. Now your icing's done, it's ready to go on your cake, so we're gonna set this aside, and in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to level, tort, and fill your cakes with this delicious chocolate icing. I'm just gonna make the recipe in half, because I don't need as, as much as it makes, um, what am I trying to say? All right, so now we're gonna add the chocolate. No, not the chocolate. It smells so good. It really is the world's best chocolate icing.